this reading today from the Gospel of Luke is no exception. Um, John, the baptizer, uh, like any good deacon, is going to ask his people to do something. And so, in addition to preaching, he's asking for people to do something a little different. If we are to believe John, the baptizer, in our reading today, then then we are all going to be filled with expectations. But John gives us that list of something to do while we wait patiently, patiently for the one who comes after him. It's a list of actions to show our love for God and for our fellow humans. The baptizer says, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. Whoever has food must be likewise. This Advent season, we are waiting. We do have expectations. We're waiting for the church year to come around to the place where we can worship the baby Jesus and celebrate the incarnation of God. God among us. As one of us. As our brother. Our touchstone to the God that we all want to be closer to, but we needed a human like ourselves to help make that leap. The leap of faith that Jesus makes so much easier for us. So we're thinking a little today about this process of waiting. It's not always easy. Patience is required. Because we're not creatures in today's world accomplished at what it takes to wait for anything. But our willingness to wait pays off more often than not. I don't want to take anything away from your personal time of quiet and expectation and meditation during Advent. We all need time to wait patiently for the Holy Spirit to prepare us for our experience in Bethlehem. If we learn from our life experience, our own life experience, we realize that our willingness to wait reveals the value that we place on the object that we're waiting for. I want to say that again. If we learn from our life experiences, we realize that our willingness to wait reveals the value that we place on the object that we're waiting for. Yes, we wait for the Christ child. But must we wait with our hands tied for his coming? Must we wait to jump into a new year of celebration, of devotion, of learning, of pain and suffering and resurrection? There's much work to do that Jesus asks us to do each and every day as we go along. He asks us every day, every day, to love our neighbor and to love God, and even to love ourselves. Waiting doesn't mean that we have to quit acting in God's name. So what are we waiting for? Well, we're used to waiting for many things. We wait for the traffic to start moving again. We wait for our friend to show up for lunch. We wait for the birth of the newest member of our family. We wait for our favorite movie to open at the theaters. We wait for medical tests that we hope will bring knowledge and closure to our worries. We wait for someone to remind us to give that code to the Union Gospel Mission. We wait to see if we make a good break this semester. But waiting by itself is not really action. We have to show up for that lunch. We have to get into that traffic that finally gets it gets us to our designation. And we have to go to the laboratory, the hospital, to have that test run. We can start digging now through our closets for the coat that we will share before winter really sets in. We show up for class and take that final exam. We act so that the waiting is not so hard. We don't put our lives on hold hoping that something will happen. We don't sit at home and worry about what will be if we can get out and do something about it. Jesus
Jesus does not want us to sit and wait. What are you waiting for, he would say. Matthew chapter 24 says it all to me about how we should wait. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. So Jesus says, keep awake, be ready, be prepared. That means action. And how are we to be prepared? To be prepared, we are to wait by not waiting. Not waiting to act. Not waiting to take those coats to the Union Gospel Mission. Not waiting to visit that sick friend at home or in the hospital. Not waiting to serve that meal to the rest of the family at St. Martin's or to your family in your own home. Not waiting to bless and pray for that person you know is in pain or sorrow or trouble. Not waiting to put your arms around those you love and telling them one more time how much you love them. Not waiting to comfort the child who is afraid, no matter how old that child is, seven or seven, seven. Not waiting to support your church family with your helping hands and your prayers and yes, even your pledge of support. So while you wait for the Christ child, continue to be silent, continue to be patient, continue to pray and meditate on all of God's creation. But remember that you're not waiting in idleness. You're waiting in action. You're praying in action. Keeping silent can be a form of action. We sort of did that some here today in a silent welcoming of the Advent season. You are becoming in silence what God plans for you to be. And you are also coming in action to be what God plans for you to be. Remember, waiting is not something we do just to get what we want. Waiting is part of a process. The process of becoming what God wants us to be. You're becoming a shepherd in the night, listening to the songs of angels over the manger. You're becoming one of the crowd that in the coming year will be taught and fed by God. The God who turns out to be your brother. You're becoming that good Samaritan who helps the traveling family find refuge in a dangerous world. God is asking you to wait in heaven. But he's also asking you, what are you waiting for?